So today's topic is being bitter over an ex-girlfriend cheating on you, breaking up with you, a girl rejecting you, a girl kind of dating you but then dating someone else, whatever it is, being upset, being bitter, being butthurt, and why the alternative, just becoming better, is better, right? And so the title of this video is Why Be Bitter When You Can Be Better. It's a very clever a uh, little aphorism, I guess, a little saying. It, was all, it is also very true. And so I had a, I wouldn't say a client, um, a guy I know on social media. He also does social media. Um, and we've talked a lot about um, dating. And he recently um, messaged me about uh, being cheated on by a girlfriend. Uh, he, they were together for like three years or something. And you know, having the typical response that most men have, um, first being upset and then going, oh, I need to turn into a savage. I need to get back on my grind. You know, I started to kind of lose my way, um, which I guess is maybe not the typical uh, male response, but like the, it is a response, right? And it's somewhat healthy. Right? I need to get back on my ship because he had gained a lot of weight. He had come, become complacent. He had kind of lost his edge. Right, And that is something you can learn from um, a breakup because usually relationships tend to make people complacent and, and, and fat and lazy and you know because you, you have a consistent source of pleasure and you have that companionship and you kind of fall under the illusion that it's going to last forever. But his response is like the mid-tier response. right? It's the typical red pill. You know, uh, fuck these bitches, I'm going to go get money and, you know, girls and I'm not going to care about anything and blah, 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 right? Um, it's not the healthiest response because it has a lot of, I guess, yeah, mid-tier strategies. Strategies that are going to maybe get you some progress um, because, I mean, you, do, you did get cheated on for some, usually when you get cheated on, you get cheated on for mainly one of two reasons. Uh, one... She wasn't attracted to you anymore, uh, doesn't respect you. Um, or two, it's a revenge response. If you're, you know, cheating on her or making her feel bad and blah, 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 it doesn't justify it, but that's one of the reasons. And then a third reason, I guess, is just she wanted some extra fun. Um, but that's very rare uh, because usually if you're a pretty attractive guy and fucks her, fucks her girl really well, she's going to stay attracted. Uh, but there are some some extremes where pretty much no matter what you're going to do, what you're going to do, a girl's going to cheat. Um, there's just women out there like that. So um, his response was to get bitter. And he expressed that to me. And he said that, you know, I need to improve myself. But at the same time, like, how do I get back at her? Should I post girls in my story? Um, should I try and make her jealous? This and that. And I'm like, well, that's just going to exacerbate your pain, first of all. And it's going to make her more likely to want to do the same thing to you. And, um, you know, he posted, uh, you know, kind of a glow up video. Like he lost a bunch of weight really, really quickly, which is good for him. And he put some thirst trap, basically. You know, he's a good looking guy in good shape and, you know, posted himself like pretty much nude. Um, and, you know, putting a thirst trap and then his ex blocked him after seeing that. So obviously she responded to it. And then somehow, I guess she unblocked him or he checked with a different social media profile. Now she was posting with a guy. And it's like, all you're doing is feeling kind of powerful for a little bit to make the girl feel jealous. But then she's just going to hit you back with the same thing. And honestly, this response in and of itself is kind of pussy bullshit. Because you're being affected by her. Right. So this girl cheated on you. Right. And what I kind of because at one point he asked me, should I try and get back with her? I'm like, OK, I need you to understand what cheating means. Like, I need you to put yourself in the situation. This is really hard and this can really fuck you up. Right. But I need you to, like, really be in that position. She was sucking a dude's dick. I want you to imagine you're watching a porno. Right. And she is just like on all fours, just like <coughs> sucking a dude off, gurgling, fucking choking herself because she can't get enough slobbering all over it, right? And she's enjoying it. She's not doing it because, you know, 
it's Tuesday and she's it's suck a dick Tuesday, right? It's her it's her fucking family tradition, right? Every hoe in her fucking bloodline sucks dick on Tuesday. No, that's not what's happening. She's doing it because she wants to do it, right? And then she's like getting on her knees and like her pussy is wet, and every time he gets a stroke, she's moaning and grinning and looking back at it, right? And watching her ass bounce as he's smashing her from behind. Like you need to fully grasp what is going on and it should make you disgusted right and you should not want to be anywhere near her look at her and or talk to her right so you should start with disgust not anger then later on you can move to a balanced approach just be like eh, whatever you know i learned some lessons from it from it and then further down the line you can even be compassionate and be like you know what you know i wish her all the best um she made a stupid decision and it's very bad karma to cheat on someone Um, and so, you know, you really wish her the best because there's going to be consequences either in this life or the next. And, uh, you know, you, you, you could even be like, Hey, I appreciate you teaching me the lesson to not trust a hoe because she was clearly showing hoe behaviors and for you to lock her down and get in a relationship with her was a fucking stupid move. I don't care how hot the pussy is or how charming a girl is or interesting. If she shows red flags, listen and believe them right when you get into a relationship with someone you should be doing your best to convince yourself not to get in a relationship with someone like i i met like the most amazing girl ever and i was still very very like "Mm, mm," and making a case against her at every turn until i couldn't make a case against her all the evidence was stacked in her favor so i had to um conclude that she was just a really amazing woman and she's proven to be that way you know for five years we've been together so i would uh i would caution against being bitter because it prevents you from doing all these things it prevents you from truly learning your lessons it gets you stuck in the same fucking loop right i'm gonna be a savage and go fuck a bunch of girls you might get away with it for a little bit but then you're gonna find a girl who's better at it than you which is what happened in this case. He found a girl who was better. Or maybe she wasn't better at first, but a woman, as long as she stays attractive, is always going to retain her ability to get men. She just has to be hot, and you know most men are just going to salivate over her. right? Whereas you have to kind of, you kind of have to do a little bit more work. But the flip side is that you usually get higher results than a woman because women tend to be kind of constrained by a lot of things. Um, and, and men can, you know, have a wider range and a depth of success um, sexually that women tend to not be able to achieve just because of how, you know, the sexes work. Um, and and so you shouldn't you know, be like, oh, it's so easy for women. It's like I would not want to trade places with a woman. Any guy who says like, oh, it's so easy for women, like just think he's saying I wish I was a girl because <laughs> he's being jealous, right? So, you know, you know he kind of wishes he could be reborn and have it easy, but there's a lot of downsides to being a woman and I wouldn't want to trade it. So, um, the main point being being bitter, being upset doesn't help you because either you're whining and crying, right? And she's out sucking dick, right? You're sitting there in your room crying and she's gurgling on cock, um, or just living her life. Even if she's upset. So even if, she is also upset. It still doesn't help your pain. People think it helps your pain, and I know because I've been there where I'm like, I'm upset, then I find out the girl who I'm upset about is also upset about me. Um, and then that kind of a, f- makes me feel a little bit better, but then at the end of the day, it doesn't stop my suffering. Someone else's suffering doesn't help my suffering. And my own suffering doesn't help my suffering. Okay? So there's like three levels to this and there's only one good one or th- there's three responses you can have there's only re- one really good response the first response is just being butt hurt right your pain being butt hurt is not going to stop your pain it's going to create a cycle right it's not like i'm going to be depressed for three months then i'm good no you should uh, you know allow yourself to process of course don't just like sweep it under the rug and don't deal with it allow yourself to process it might take three months Okay, it might take five, it might take six, it might take a year, or it might take three weeks. But all that time, you're constantly trying to fix the pain by finding a solution to the pain. 
But most people just like, oh, my solution to the pain is stay in the pain. It's like, no. You can gain toughness from pain, but in order to gain tough toughness from pain, you have to face it. But most people just give in to the pain and give in to the pain and give in to the pain, which essentially just means you sit there, you have these thoughts, oh my God, I fucked up, I'm such an idiot, or da da da. And then it just creates more pain. Whereas instead of saying, you know what, I, I feel this pain, but let's go into it. What actually am I feeling pain about? Like, think, ask very simple questions. Why are you upset that this girl cheated on you? I know it's like, duh, someone you love cheated on you. Okay, what does it mean? What about it? Is it because it means the other guy's better than you, so it means you suck? Is it means she did love you and stopped loving you because you did X or Y? What was X or Y that you did that made her stop loving you? What about her particular personality caused her to do this? Right? Like I said, you know, uh, a hoe is a hoe and I can't blame Tammy. Right? That's, you know, it's a Little Wayne lyric. I forgot which fucking song it is, but it's great. And he says, um, you know, hoes will be hoes, so I couldn't blame Tammy. Tammy being some chick who cheated on Little Wayne. And he's like, she's just doing what she does. She's, you know, a, a snake is going to do snake things. Uh, you know, um, a good person is going to do good person things. Right? Now, people have free will and they're not totally slave, slaves to their... Um, habits but for the most part most people are um, so you have to break every little thing that happened down into questions and then at the end of the day the conclusion to a lot of these will be okay I'm still in pain then you have to ask yourself well do you want to be in pain no I want to stop being in pain so is continuing to, to play these memories and thoughts in your head over and over again helping you get rid of pain no they're continuing it so it just makes you go, oh, so continuing to play these memories and emotions, which you're choosing to do, you're, you're giving them license to run free in your mind and do whatever they want, it's causing you pain, right? So stop it. Your pain doesn't, is not going to get rid of your pain. Learning from your pain will get rid of your pain. S the second one is, I'm in pain, I'm going to give pain to others. This, this, this can go from just like, I'm posting a thirst trap and making her jealous to killing someone. People all over the world kill other people for X or Y reasons. This person is evil. This person is, you know, um, you know, causing me harm, whether they know them or they don't know them. So in the case of like a, um, like a girlfriend or someone who's rejected you, you know, I've gotten t angry at so many women for whatever reason, for rejecting me, for not wanting to have sex with me, for um, not seeing me anymore, for cheating on me, for breaking up with me, right? And I've recognized and I went, okay, why is this, it, why is this frustration now turning into anger, right? Is this healthy? Is this a healthy thing to feel? Well, no, right? Oh my, you know, you walk up to a girl and she looks at you like, you know, you have fucking, you know, leprosy. And all you said was, hey, excuse me, you know, I just thought you were really cute. And she's like, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why would you respond to someone like that, right? And she could be a cunt, right? But she could also be, you know, she knows that if she, like, is too polite and entertains this guy, he's going to take it as a green light because there are guys like that who, like, continue to persist and persist way beyond, you know, what's, what's acceptable. And so she's kind of learned to put up this wall in order to not, you know, give the wrong signs to the, excuse me, to the wrong guys. Or she just had a bad day. You don't know this woman, right? You know, her fucking dog may have just died or her, her dad or her mom just died today or, or like, or she got cheated on a week ago and you're walking up to her trying to hit on her and she's like, oh, another guy who's going to break my heart. Fuck you. Right. Or she's just a piece of shit, isn't attracted to you and treats you like scum because she thinks you're beneath her. She could be a cunt. I'm not excusing every girl's behavior and justifying it. Sometimes people are just fucking assholes, right? But there's always a reason behind them being assholes. It doesn't justify it, but it does explain it. And it can allow you to have some compassion because you've been an asshole at some point and done pretty much everything that you get mad at others for doing, you've probably done it at some point. And you probably will do it at some point, right? And so are you going to call yourself out when you do it, right? But the the main point is lashing out at someone either in your own mind because you know most of you aren't going to actually like do anything you know outside of you know post a thirst trap or something and it's pretty light you know you're not 
going out of your way to hurt someone, but it still is hurting someone, right? So I would advise not to do anything that is an attempt to hurt someone. If like you go out and start dating and she sees you as some girl, okay, well, you couldn't control that, right? You didn't intend to hurt her. Um, but the question, just like with the first strategy is, does hurting the other person in your mind, just like imaginarily, like, I wish I could tell her how I feel and tell her to go fuck herself and, you know, I hope she fucking blah, 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 blah. I hope she gets cheated on and feels the pain that I felt, whatever, right? Does that internal, like, lashing out or you do it, like, you say something mean, you send her a mean text, um, does that stop your pain? Same thing. Once you go through all the logic, it's an obvious no. It might feel good for a little bit, but all you're doing is like a balance transfer on a credit card. Like you have all this like pain, right? So you owe like two grand to your internal credit card, right? Well, then you're going to throw it at someone else. Well, really what you're doing is you're just momentarily balance transferring. You're sending that debt to them, but it's going to come right back to you. Either immediately or later on. I promise you. And so you're not paying your debt. You got to pay your debt. You got to work through this pain and learn why it happened. And the lesson might literally just be, like I said, don't date hoes. Like, don't date girls who are going to do whorey things. Or the lesson might be, you fucked up. You did something wrong. You stopped paying attention to her. You stopped caring about her. You stopped, you know, fucking her. You just got complacent and lazy. And she wasn't a slut. And she didn't cheat on you, but she just broke up with you. Right? But now you're making all these fucking imaginary tales like, oh nice guys finished last or you know i tried so hard did you did you try hard what did you really you know like just paying the rent and and you know being there for the kid doesn't make you a good lover or husband it makes you a good father it makes you a good man but it doesn't necessarily make you a good lover like you have to have relationship lover skills to want someone to stay as a lover to you which is mean mostly meaning sex so you got to learn your lesson and just lashing out isn't going to solve anything, right? And I know how angry you can get, right? Women feel the same thing. I remember when I broke up with my ex, um, she really didn't take it well. My ex like a long time ago in Romania, she didn't take it well. And, um, but we lived in the same building and there was a gym in our, in our building. And I was uh, working out, and she was there too. And um, I asked her to help me, like to just spot me really quick, because I just needed, you know, just just in case. But like she was standing there, and she joked, she's like, "Oh, I should just let it fall on you." And I was like, "That's really violent, right?" Like, it's she did it with a laugh, and it, she meant it as a joke. But at the end of the day, like, just flip positions. Like if I said, "Oh, I wish you know you got crushed by this weight," like I hope you die, like. It's, it's still a violent thought, right? And she felt it because she thought I caused her a lot of pain, which maybe to some extent I did, but she was also responsible for a lot of the things that happened in the relationship. I was guilty of a lot of things and so was she, right? But, you know, she, she basically said, I hope you fucking die. <laughs> like that's, that's, you know, let's, let's not dance around the subject. So men and women can feel a lot of anger and hate and resentment towards the, the other sex um, because of the pain that they perceive was caused by them. It doesn't get rid of your pain. So the third strategy, the one that does get rid of the pain is getting better. Learn your lesson, learn lessons about relationships and sex and attraction and romance and companionship and, and, and maintaining a relationship, uh, giving that person attention and affection and, and continuing to look for ways to re-seduce a woman over and over again and not getting complacent, whether it's five years, 10 years, or 50 years, right? But also, at the same time, you know, on the other end, you know, maintaining respect, not letting someone start to walk all over you because even the nicest girl, she's not going to intend to do it, but if she starts to like little by little by little by little kind of chip away at your authority, she's going to slowly resent you. 
and not in some like weird malicious psychopathic way like i'm going to try and take his power and then hate him for letting me take it it's more like people just sometimes let power get to their heads and if you continuously capitulate like she be she's sassy or she says something disrespectful and it's small and you're like okay it's not a big deal and then the next time oh it's not a big deal and then you let it go well then 20 times down the line then she starts being really disrespectful and you're like oh where did this come from why are you being such a bitch and it's like well you let her get away with it but if you really roll back the tape and you look why did she even do those little disrespectful things most of the time it's them doing the second strategy them feeling in pain and lashing out at you maybe they feel like you're not paying attention to them and now should they be mature and communicate yeah but that's an ideal world <laughs> you know um and you should say that you should say hey instead of lashing out at me just tell me how you really feel if you're like upset that i'm not paying attention to you or giving you attention or um you know um i you feel like i'm kind of neglecting you or when i am with you you don't feel like i'm 100 percent there which is a lot of what women complain about um it's just not feeling affection or you're not fucking her and then going okay instead of you can tell her like be mature and explain express that to me but you know that's asking a lot you know please be a perfect communicator of your emotions you can only ask for that when you are also a perfect communicator of your emotions like i still make that mistake like the just yesterday, uh, my wife met a friend, a, a different Ukrainian girl, and wants to go to this park with her. And it's a couple hours away, and she's like, do you want to come? And I'm like, not really. I just don't – I don't like sudden plans, and I don't really care for parks too much. Um, and she's like, okay, well, is it okay if I go with her? I'm like, yeah, I don't care, right? But I kind of got upset, and I didn't quite know why, and I kind of – I was just, I didn't say anything mean, but I was just kind of had an energy of like, okay, whatever, go, you know, I want to do my own thing. And then I realized I was like, oh, I'm upset because I feel like a bad partner. I feel like a bad husband because I, um, you know, I'm not going with her and I feel like I'm, you know, being neglectful and, and, and I should, you know, in an ideal world, I should go with her to the park and spend the whole day with her, but I don't really feel like it. So I expressed that to her and I said, that's how I feel. And I think I just, I lashed out. I didn't lash out with anything, you know, mean or say anything. It was just my energy. And I expressed that to her and I apologized and she appreciated it. All right. So even I do it, right. I had to catch, and I'm super self-aware, probably one of the most self-aware people I've ever met and, and, and constantly vigilant over my own emotions in the way I express myself. And I was like, oh shit, you know, I got, I was upset at myself, but then I took it out on her. So, you know until you have reached perfection of of your emotions and communicating your emotions you can't really expect others to be perfect so in knowing that when people do do imperfect things you need to make sure you catch it right away like every time a girl try you know she is a little bit you know sassy or this or that if it's playful i'll have fun with it because it can be a little bit fun sometimes but if it's ever like i feel like it's genuine I'll call it out. Be like, hey, I don't like your attitude. I don't like your tone. And then, of course, she'd be like, well, I didn't really mean it. And I'd be like, no, you did. Let's, you know. I try not to turn it into like a fucking therapy session every time because that's exhausting. But the more you catch it, the less it happens. I promise you. All right. So these are just like little relationship tips that I'm giving you. But this is exactly the type of wisdom that you will gain if you are able to, instead of being bitter and upset, Oh, she's being disrespectful to me, this or that, whatever. It could just be, it might not even be on the level of like a breakup or cheating, you know, an infidelity. It could just be like, oh, you know, my girlfriend was kind of sassy to me or a bitchy or, you know, this or that. Catch yourself in that moment. And you can somewhat allow your, your emotions to get through to give you kind of some force. Be like, hey, I don't appreciate that. With a little bit of you know pepper in in your in your words, it can help kind of get the message across, um, but not to the extent where it's stopping you from learning your lesson and evaluating the situation objectively. Why is she acting this way? What's a good response to it? How do I fix it? How do I prevent it in the future? That's the wisdom that you gain, and it makes you better. Whereas just being bitter just leads you in an endless spiral and circle. So. No matter what situation you're you're in, whether it's, you know, getting cheated on by a girlfriend or just dealing with a well, a wife who's being sassy or I don't know, whatever it is, stop, 
pay attention, try to keep your composure, and think, okay, how can I become better instead of bitter? Because there's really, when you look at it, there are zero instances where being bitter is better than just being better. Being better is always better because you're better. You're not in pain and you improve as a person, which then gets you more of the things you want in the future. I get rejected by a girl. Okay, why? That is the essence of how I became good at what I do. Something bad happens. Why did it happen? I don't know. Okay, well, I need to keep searching until I find out or keep reiterating similar situations until I find the cause of what makes the rejection happen. But most people just surrender themselves stupidly to very simple explanations. Well, well, it just wasn't meant to be. The fuck does that mean? Do you have some grand thesis on fate and karma? Like, no? Then you should look closer at why the fuck it didn't work out. Why did they reject you? If at the end of the day you can't find anything, then you can go, okay, I just wasn't their type. But even then you can be like, okay, could there be a way that I could be so attractive that even if I'm not their type, she could still be attracted to me? It doesn't mean you have to do that, but it's still an explanation. I got good by just asking when something bad happens, why did it happen? And if something good happens, why did it happen? Because a lot of times people see good things happen and then they wrongly, they point to the wrong cause. Oh, I get girls because, you know, I, I show them affection, then I pull back affection. You know, I, I, I play the game, you know, I make them chase after me. It's like, okay, that might be one variable, but it's not necessarily the only thing. How do I know that? Well, because you can do that and have it backfire where you create a lot of jealousy or a lot of insecurity, and then she auto-rejects and stops chasing after you. So that adds nuance to it. All right, I can make people want me, but then if I, if I make them too bitter, they're just going to check out. Okay, so it isn't just making someone chase you that is, um, makes them like want you. What made them actually want you in the first place? Oh, well, being high value, what does that mean? Well, I'm rich or I'm good looking in this. Okay, is it really that? Can you find a rich guy who isn't attractive? Yeah, okay. Well, so that's not the only variable. And there are weighted variables. Everything has a weight to it. This might have some weight, but then this thing over here that you're not paying attention to is actually more of a cause for attraction. That's wisdom. That's learning and reflecting and understanding, you know, and, and the reason I'm able to do it is because I had all of my experiences and then all of the experiences of people who I'm teaching. I've, you know, lived hundreds of lives of, of romantic experience in, you know, 32 years because I've spent the time to see other people's experiences and learn from them. And I was able to know and confirm that I was correct because I'd give them advice and then it would work. So I, I pointed to the right thing. But even after a long time, I still was like, oh, I can refine even further what my advice was. So the only way I was able to do that was not being bitter and instead being better. And I've been through a lot of shit with women. I have just as reason to be upset and bitter with women as pretty much anyone watching this video. Guarantee if you show me some sort of trauma you have with girls, I bet I can trump you. Right? The only person who can trump me is someone who has been literally like stabbed or shot by a woman. That's it. If you got that, okay. <laughs> You have more reasons to be better than me. Other than that, I don't really see it. So, I kind of want to say, like, don't be a bitch, right? Um, but I don't want to be harsh for no reason. The goal is to make you better. So, it's your choice. Better or better. But I think it's always better to be better because being bitter just makes you more bitter. Anyways, Patrick Steele, girlshase.com. I have shit in the description. Go buy it. It will give you wisdom that will make you better. And if you want to get really better really fast, sign up for coaching. Link in the description, consultation with me. We'll talk and we'll get really better. Anyways, love you guys. Go fuck yourself. Bye.